Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of this build series featuring this awesome 125th scale 1968 Shelby GT500. As cool as this barn find body looks, or maybe more accurately basement find body, the real highlight of this build is the all new 3D printable double control arm front suspension assembly. This build is intended to be sort of a test bed for this all new suspension design which will soon be made available on our Patreon page. Of course, if you'd like to learn more about it and catch up on this project, be sure to check out the part one video, which I'll link below in the description. As you probably recall from the last video, I got the front suspension assembled and mounted to the chassis, along with the rear axle, motor, and drivetrain. The chassis fits this body perfectly, but I still need to get the body mounted to it and install the remaining electronics before I can start ripping this car around. So let's dive right in and get this car ready to drive. So this is purely cosmetic, but I decided to paint the wheels using some Rust-Oleum aluminum colored paint. I also washed the dust off of the tires and painted that edge left behind after trimming the rear piece flat black to match the rest of the chassis. I really love how the wheels look with this paint. We'll be having a look at the wheels mounted on the car later, but for now it's time to get those additional electronics mounted to the chassis. I've listed these electronics that I'm using below in the description. What you see here is the ESC, battery and receiver, as well as an adapter for the steering servo. The first thing I needed to do was solder a JST connector onto the motor so that I could plug it into the ESC. Obviously, I needed to remove the motor from the chassis to do this. With the connector added and the motor reinstalled, I continued by connecting each component together and powering on the car for the first time. With everything working great, I got each component secured to the chassis using double-sided tape and Velcro. Finally, I added the freshly painted wheels to the chassis and just placed the body on top to admire the work so far. I spent a little time brainstorming how exactly I wanted to mount the body to the chassis. I decided to use these little FFR SC1 body mounts, which are the same ones that I used for the General Lee build. They'll be glued to the inside of the body, one on each side, then they'll be secured to the chassis with bolts and nuts. These body mounts can be found on Patreon. You will need to glue the M1 nuts into these little recessed areas. What I do next is get them positioned on the chassis using a bolt and washer. Then I apply some glue and place the body on how I want it to be positioned and hold it there until the glue dries. This is definitely best to do before you paint your body in case you get some excess glue on the outside, but this body was already painted when I started this build, plus this car is kind of a beater, so I'm not worried about a little excess glue. It might not be as convenient as using magnets, which I've showcased on many builds previously, but it's a nice option to secure the body. After a quick test though, the front suspension is completely bottomed out, so I'll need to install some longer springs up front. Getting the exact length and stiffness springs is a lesson in patience and persistence. It's going to take some trial and error to get everything tuned right, especially if you're using softer springs to allow the suspension to move easier. I've still got a lot more adjusting to do with this car, but at least I was able to get it so that the front suspension isn't bottomed out. So with the car operating perfectly and the body mounted, it's time to do some driving. As we dive into the test drives, I do want to apologize for the lack of video quality. It was pretty dark and ideally I'd like to have someone else to help with filming and driving, but it was just me for this video. I had a blast driving this car around. Everything was functioning very well, especially the all new front suspension design. Like I said before, I need to do a little more tuning with the springs, both in the front and the rear to get the suspension moving how I want and to adjust the ride height a bit as the rear is sitting a little high and the front left was a bit low, 
but right now I just wanted to focus more on the big picture if you will, and just see if this front suspension actually works. And it most certainly does. The body has some roll in the turns, and it does its job over the bumps. I know you probably won't be able to make out much, if anything, from this video footage, but it's really cool to see in person. You can see the front wheels going up and down really quick in the wheel wells, as it drives over all the little bumps and cracks in between the foam tiles, and the body pitches and rolls to a certain degree as well. Now with that said, I don't think you're ever going to get 70s movie car chase scene levels of rocker panel scraping body roll with this suspension, at least not without going very fast. But seeing the movement is cool, and in my opinion, makes the car more fun to drive. And speaking of fun to drive, I really can't say enough how much I've enjoyed driving this GT500. I'm sure I've probably literally put a few miles on this tiny car since I've gotten it up and running. It's just how the car handles and subtly bounces over the bumps that's just fun to watch, and the N20 motor just delivers instant power even if the car doesn't have a very high top speed. My only complaint aside from the suspension needing tuning is these silicone tires provide way too much grip. I mean feel free to call me crazy, but the 68 GT500 is a Mustang with a huge 7 liter V8 and way over 400 foot pounds of torque. There should be oversteer and rear tires breaking loose all day long with this thing, but right now this thing corners like an F1 car. Lower grip tires might not make it faster, but it sure would make it cooler in my opinion. I'm probably getting ahead of myself a little here because although this car was working well, one issue I encountered was the body rubbing up against the front wheels. To fix this, I simply put some 1mm spacers in between the body mounts and the chassis. This certainly helped, but to completely eliminate any wheel rub, I'll need to get the front suspension to sit a little higher, probably with some slightly stiffer springs. I hit the track once again with far less wheel rub. As I've talked about before, one area we're working on improving is the steering. The Ackerman geometry of this setup currently works, but there's definitely room for improvement. I've had a number of people ask whether or not this suspension assembly would work well for drifting, and I tend to think not, because the wheels aren't able to turn very sharp before they'll hit the frame rails. Also, I think the whole steering setup would need to be reworked as well. I'm pretty confident that the steering radius of this Shelby is better than what a full-size one would be shrunken down to 125th scale. However, I don't think it's necessarily tight enough for drifting when some chassis will get you close to 90 degrees of steering angle. I want to make it clear that really the idea for our chassis is just to give you an affordable, 3D printable, realistic looking base to build a highly detailed model car on top of. Going out and beating $300, $500, $900 plus brushless Mini Zs and purpose-built micro drift chassis isn't on the list of priorities. Of course I love our designs, but if you really want to go drifting on a competition level, I'll be the first to tell you to go out and get something like an XRX chassis. Now with that said, it might be a fun challenge to try and build a drift car with this chassis at some point. That would be a cool project, and I'm sure it's possible, but I'm a realist enough to know that it's not going to be anywhere near a competition level machine. But putting the focus back on the Shelby, after a few hours of testing, I'm very satisfied with where this car and suspension is at now. Still plenty of room for improvement, but a solid start. I wouldn't recommend driving a car using the suspension on anything other than smooth, flat, hard surfaces. But inspired by real-world suspension testing tracks, and after many hours of design and construction, I made a little testing track of my own. Yeah, I hear you Arma owner snickering, but remember this car has control arms smaller than pennies, so it's relative to the car that I'm testing. I proceeded to replicate a typical commute one might have on one of Michigan's interstates in 125th scale. The car handled the bumps no problem. In fact, it's pretty cool watching the suspension do its thing, though the rear suspension especially needs some adjusting to make it less bouncy. Again, I apologize for the lack of video quality. I think once I get the suspension dialed in, I'll have someone help me out with getting some nice driving footage outside on a nice sunny day so you all can really see this car in action. Right now though, I'm very pleased with this new front suspension assembly and this car as a whole. At this time, we're full speed ahead on getting the first version of the files into the hands, or rather the printers of our patrons. Lots more updates and new parts to follow, but I look forward to seeing what you all do with this new suspension design. This certainly won't be the last time you see this car on this channel, 
But this is where I'm going to end today's video. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.